Fable 2 was a game designed with the idea that the original was too difficult, too complicated. All those rough edges chamfered, and in their place, a dog called Bacon. Molyneux giveth and Molyneux taketh away, and this time he's taken away the mana bar, the ability to get a game over, and the minimap. So, we'll need to do something about that to make this a meaty challenge, and the rules are as follows. We can only use the weapons, armour and equipment from Demon Doors. No using shops or traders, no using potions that are obtained outside of Demon Doors, and as THE Peter Molyneux removed the ability to game over if you lose all your health, we'll be resetting and loading the most recent save if we do. This time we can only access three of the Demon Doors, and there are no tricks and no way to sneak into the rest. So, let's go. Sparrow is cold and hungry, so menial tasks complete. A drunk return to accountancy, beetles demolished, some oik drops the nut on my sister, so we give him the patented sparrow thrust technique and save this poor dog. Help Monty get his wife back by giving her some crap poetry and point and laugh as he gets rejected and his world crumbles around him. Belinda, you shouldn't talk to your mum like that. Oh, now you're taking her side. What? No. Well, maybe you should marry her instead. But you're my one true love. Without you, there are no stars and no moon in my nights. Incidentally, Monty is also voiced by James Corden. Enough said. Get a music box, play it, thing disappears, get someone to a castle, Lucian one taps sister, and punts us out of the castle. <coughs> hmm, Lucian, we will remember that. Your time will come. Now we can remove our non-demon door clothes and carry on with the tutorial. Teresa has us in the old guild hall. Unfortunately, we need to use the terrible weapons we've been given, so as soon as we finish running the gauntlet and use some willpowers on this orb, we can start proper and never use a non-demon door item again. We can roam, free to the world, just us and Bacon, our trusty companion. Us against the world, boy. No harm will come of you. The path is blocked due to bandit activity. So we need to rush off to Noble Thag in his camp. Keep your wits about you. It may be a trap. It was, in fact, a trap. Members of the patchwork gang will show up, defeat them by way of running away and throwing fireballs at them. Thag, the impatient one, will make an appearance. And he kicks bacon. No one hurts bacon. No one. Now we need to open this chest to free the slaves. Unfortunately, meaning that we do in fact need to get some non-demon door loot. Is what I would have said. Alternatively, we can just leave and hope the issue with the people in cages sorts itself out somehow. In Bowerstone, Teresa's running late. Typical. And we have some time to kill. Off to our first demon door. It seems he wants some meat and there are some chickens conveniently nearby. When inside, there's a lovely chest with some XP potions. Drink them all, and now it's time for the first exploit of the run. If you connect a second controller, you can play as a guest character, who happens to have the exact same stats as your current character. When they join, you can also set it so Sparrow here gets all of the XP that's left over. So if you go into the guest character skills and discard them all, then quit out as the guest, all of that XP now transfers over to Sparrow. And after doing that a few times, Tranquil as a forest, but on fire within. Once you find your center, you are sure to win. You're a spineless, pale, pathetic lot, and you haven't got a clue. Somehow I'll make a man out of you. Oh look, we're now completely maxed out. I'm sure this won't cause any issues later. Take Beefcake to see Teresa. And on the way, what on earth is this run slash walk cycle? Also, is it just me or are his pecs too long? Looks like he just needed to be broader to make these proportions make sense. After Anatta, we're sent off to gather three heroes that will help us get to Lucian, who has set up shop in the Tattered Spire. So, off to investigate the Temple of Light. 
On the way, some gun-toting ragamuffins are guarding the path, taking pot shots at us with particularly crap flintlock rifles. Nothing a few fireballs can't resolve. It's now off into the drink to show up Michael Phelps in the 50 metre freestyle and into the Hob Cave. This poor chap's lost his boy and we're gonna help find him. So after trundling through and dispatching the shark toothed Lord of the Rings extras, we come up against an arch nemesis, the door. It wants us to break it down with a sword, but we can't do that. After spamming fireballs, charged fireballs and some AOE fireballs, we need a different tactic as that just wobbled the door a bunch. Turns out that using the Vortex spell will let us through. Nice. Anyway, some gremlin nobbling later, we get out of the cave and make our way to the abbot. He needs us to escort a monk to fill up some pot. We are apparently buff enough, but we need more fake clout points before he'll let us help. You look imposing all right, but I can't entrust our community's survival to a complete stranger. What isn't trustworthy about this guy? Fair enough, it's now side quest time. Barnum has yet another harebrained scheme for us to get involved in. He has the deed for the Rookridge Bridge and needs us to clobber all of the Motley Crew marauders so he can start work. Let's go. So after yomping up to the bar, we can casually explode ourselves to finish off everyone here and chase after Dash, the fastest footpad in Albion. You think you're gonna catch me? Why do you think they call me Dash, stupid? He'll continue to jeer at us and send some vagabonds veering towards us. Nothing that can't be solved with the power of Kongu Kokoret Susan and exploding bits of fire launch from our palms. Heading over the bridge, we figure out one of the most useful strategies. Use the summon spell at level 2 or 3 to bring up some ethereal enemies to keep all of the crooks busy and use that time to charge up a big fireball to prevent them from causing any further nuisance. Dash is big chilling up on top of Stonehenge and Bacon, the best dog, has chased him up there and is keeping him occupied. Back to Barnum. We're still a touch short of renown. Nothing that showing off our now ill-gotten gains of a sweaty pair of goggles can't fix. Look, people of Oakfield and the denizens of the Sangus, for I have returned with my prize. Gaze upon the goggles of some bloke you've probably never met or been bothered by. Yes, I am worthy of your praise. No, I don't do autographs. The abbot is somehow impressed by this and sends us off to find the strong monk. And after finding Sister Hammer relaxing in a tree, we take her inside. Basically, we need to stand on one of the pressure plates while she stands on the other. From up here, any of the crumbling carcasses that show up can all be reduced to ashes with a level five fireball. Also, no wonder she says she can feel it getting heavier. She's hoisting that thing up with nothing but the power of Death Star dealt. Once the jug has been completely topped up, we head into the main chamber and she blesses the water. But there's an interruption, an attack on the temple. Hannah rips the hammer off the wall to now solve the problems through blunt force trauma. After dashing back through the temple, one of Lucian's lackeys has force fed the abbot a lead suppository. Now, as the abbot is being buried, Hammer comes with us to the Heroes Guild to help her avenge her father. I tried to see if we could head all the way through Brightwood and the Bandit Coast to sneak into Westcliff for our second Leviathan Latchway, but unfortunately we get blocked off here at the door and we have no way to click through like the first game. So on with the main story. Garth, the mage, is in Brightwood and needs to be convinced to join our side. Upon heading through the gates, it appears Lucian has beaten us to the punch and is sending all of his corrupt flunkies out to get Garth. No matter. All our problems can be resolved with summon spells plus large explosions. But we're too late. Garth gets grabbed by the ghoulies and sucked away by a fanfic Darth Maul clone to the Tattered Spire. Now to get more info on Lucian, we need to ask Jeeves, as apparently he's willing to spill the beans. But for a price. And here's something else that's written down. My price. Don't let anyone else see it. A thousand gold. I don't have that kind of money. So, let's dramatically reduce his blood pressure. And he's immortal. Hmm. Let's reload and try something else. We'll need to increase our corruption for an Astaroth Abyss later on. We also own a caravan from much earlier as a quest reward. Fable 2 is quite interesting in that you can earn rent money, even while the game isn't playing. So, we can head back to the caravan, jack up the price like the terrible landlord we are, and advance the system clock by a chunk of time. And when we load back into the game, boom, 1500 gold. Over to the greedy steward and give him his prize. Aha, a map. So what's stopping me taking the money back, I wonder? To the diaries.
Lovely. We can now change our name to the democratically decided Salad Dodger to be a dynamic duo with Bacon, the dog. Now to follow the map and we get to this area where a fungus ridden mudslinger wants to get into a flame war and we have no gun. We can use the fireball tap shot at him but it does very little damage. This definitely isn't going to be a nuisance later. After a couple of minutes circling and lobbing plasma at the chap we've come up against an issue. We need to dig up Lucian's diary and I've tried to figure out a way around it but I came up blank. None of the speedrunners had any idea either. But considering it's not armour, weapons or potions, it's just to advance the plot, I didn't feel massively bad about being forced to dig it up. And as a just aside, the spade was a crest reward at the beginning of the game so I consider obtaining that fine. It also appears that our years of being a poor landlord have snuck up on us and we're now a very horny boy. After we have a gander over to Teresa so she can have a look, we need to make our way all the way back to Brightwood again. I'm running a little low on health, but it should be fine. Saves me needing to run back to a bed so I can heal up. This time we're allowed through the gate. And by allowed, I mean hammer smited. Smitten? Smote it? With her hammer? We can actually be charging up a level 5 fireball here, ready to incinerate the Dick Turpin fan club. And I died. Well, it wasn't that easy, was it? So, time to quit out and retry. Make our way all the way back and this time we get through without issue. As I had full health to begin with. Now we have to finish the quest here before we can return to the Antichrist Archway. We have a meeting with some of the lycanthrope layabouts. They don't take much punishment and we can trundle on our merry way until we reach Lilith? Interesting choice of name. Let's help her go and find Frederick in the Howling Halls, a rather imposing ruined cathedral. Lilith leads us downstairs through the halls and oh no, what a shocking turn of events. She was a white she-devil all along. Children, I bring you flesh. Our summon spells now cause spectral balverines to show up and help out, which is pretty metal. Get some helpers and charge up big fireballs to blast everyone away. It should be fine and... Oh, well that's our second death. Let's restart. Back to the bludgeoning of balverines. Eventually us, Hammer and the trio of Cocker Spaniel Spectres can knock down the pillar. Head over to the other side and leave the Howling Halls, completing the quest. Before we make a start on anything else, we can head back to the Mayroon's Dagon doorway. He's delighted by our horns and lets us get in to the Calavera. A mace first wielded by Vipress, half warrior, half witch, whose beauty was only equalled by her strength and her wrath. Men worshipped her and she led many into Albion's bloodiest battles. It's all right, kind of mid, but at least we have something to melee with. And this flaming skull bonker will do quite nicely. Now, to go into the Crucible, we need to be more famous. So let's peruse through the quest list and hop off to nobble the jobbers over at the Temple of Light. It's just rerunning back through the cave we were at earlier with Hammer, but this time the edgy boys are here. Treat problems with Fireball. And if they stay standing, yes, Fireball again. Cornelius Grimm then attacks us head on and, yep, you guessed it, issue resolved with Fireball. Next errand, Giles' farm is being attacked, and we need to head off and get Ripper and his buddies ready for the hangman's noose. Into the centre of the melee we go, summon our blobbery companions, and give all of the ruffians a mace-sized suppository. The beatings stop when Ripper himself shows up. Beat him until the coward gives in. Let's let him live. We can give Giles the satisfaction, or at least the choice. And now the Crucible is waiting. Apparently our Instagram page is popular enough to let us in. This is actually a little concerning. With no way to heal, we'll have to figure out some sort of strategy to make this work. So, the first room. Beetles. It hobs. Ready your ghostly buddies and blow them all up. Then use some elbow grease on the fellas in stilts. It's Conjurer Gremlins and extremely happy kamikaze kobolds. One tap blast those that suffer from explosions and summon plus AoE fireball the rest. The Shambling Horde. Stand in the middle and introduce them to your little friends and explode them whilst preoccupied. Head under the bridge and keep pumping up the level 5 fireballs. This also catches them on the higher levels. 
for whatever reason. But we had very low health after this room, so let's try something. In the original fable, if you leveled up health, you'd gain the amount of life that your life bar grows by. Let's see how it works here, but we are max level. So after discarding a level and regaining max toughness, we are fully healed? That's very good to know, but it feels cheap. As I can use the, as previously discussed, XP exploit to get unlimited XP and then undo and redo a health level just to get all of my health back and get me out of any scrape. That sounds awfully like a potion. So let's not do that and bear it in mind. After restarting the crucible, we fall. Again and again and again and again. I spent about two hours here trying to get through, denying myself what I knew the solution was. And so our story begins. But who is the hero of our tale? Then let his destiny unfold. Back in our childhood, yet again. And this time we'll be using our toughness level up as our only way to regain health mid-quest. We'll get a maximum of five throughout the game, so let's make them count. Time to make our way all the way back to the Crucible from the very beginning. And after dying an additional six times on the way and spending four and a half hours, we're back. More lads spared from the gallows, run around, summon our imaginary friends and roast them until well done. Our friends from the Howling Halls have returned, but this time with a whimper. They're no match for our translucent tagalongs and an internal combustion demonstration. The basement dwelling troll trawler of hobbyist forums is upon us. He presents his blackheads to us for us to pop incredibly slowly. The one tap damage is laughable, but we can't charge up to inflict more as he'll hit us out of the animation. Keep plugging and off his gremlin friends when he spawns them in. I've saved up some level ups to use here and end up having to refill. We're now at level three giving us an additional two refills for the rest of the game. And what is in far too close a call, we squeak it out. After our glory in the crucible, the crowds know our name. The excitement, the applause, it's intoxicating. But that, that isn't what we're here for. As much as we want to linger in the adoration, our mission is not complete. Lucian remains. The blood of our sister has dried on his hands, but it is fresh in our mind. We have a job to do. The Spire, it calls. We can take nothing with us. Hammer will mine bacon and our weapons. See you later, old friend. We will meet again. The pulse of the place is enough to send a man mad, but not us. We walk in with the confidence of a particular proper Irishman. Lucian is within arm's reach, but we must wait for the right time to strike, for plot reasons. We awake fitted with a compliant collar and some clothes forced upon us, with no way to reveal our nudist tendencies. We push through. Bob, our cellmate, shows us to the prisoners, and there he is, Garth, the fabled hero of Will is safe. We need to wait for the right time. The Commandant summons us and tries to teach me to comply. Every time I disregard his orders, a terrifying pain. One from the root of my being itself. My memories of the journey thus far extracted, forcibly ripped from my psyche, leaving only a void where they were. Some time has passed. The heartbeat of this place is now one with myself. The time just keeps moving. The job is not yet complete. The spire is not yet built. Remember why you're here! No, I do not feel one with the Spire. We simply are one. This place, it cocoons me. I feel its dark embrace swaddling me into oblivion. Don't you dare! A choice. These men are damned to die. They starve. Master wills it to be so. I'll just sit here and what are you doing? It's insane. Remember why Man, you're here! What's everything going on? I can't believe what's going to be. It's fighting! It's everywhere. I can hear the voices. I can hear them. Remember! Oh, 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 Wake up, Salad Dodger. I won't be bested and turned into a fiend. Another eternity passes, another instruction to be followed. To the depths of this breathing cesspit of despair, another man has lost his life. I collect his effects and... Garth? You're back. The collar. Removed. My abilities. Returned. My fury. Unshackled. Oh, now it's on. We can again make our way back up through the spire. Although we're forced to acquire the weapons of the guard, we won't be using them. Will is enough. Spawning summons and big explosions are the way forward. Inch forwards and summoning fellas as you go to not get blindsided. 
and then lead Garth to the central room to help make a getaway. The Sith Lord cosplay will now show up with a band of goons and challenge us to a brawl, which I promptly lost. I will say that this is a blow, for the simple reason that each reset here at this point takes approximately 9 minutes to get back to. This is going to be a slog. The strat is to get everyone focused on summons whilst you charge up big fireballs. Heal up here if needed, and with that Garth is rejuvenated and able to help. But don't think we're out of the woods yet. Another battle is ahead of us, and this time we smash our way through their ranks, leaving all of Lucian's gophers for dust. Board the ship, back to Albion. We can remove the stink of that uniform while we're at it as well. Bacon is safe, and Teresa has news. It's been 10 years. We'll find out more at the guild. The hero of skill has finally been revealed. A pirate by the name of Reaver, crime lord in Bloodstone. We need to go there to convince him to join us. To get to Wraith Marsh, we'll need a working Cullis Gate. Fortunately, Garth has one in his tower. Unfortunately, the place has been overrun by members of the Black Fingernail, and we will need to fight our way through. Brilliant. But with both heroes of strength and will, the Smashing Pumpkins fanboys are no more, and we ruin their promo tour for their latest album. Even the floating pizza slices are no match for our mighty mace. Keeping all of the trench coat clad lads off Garth is a fairly simple exercise. Lightning, goblins, job done. Just keep on spamming until they all give up and go home. Dash for the Collis Gate and it breaks behind us, leaving us alone in the foggy wastelands. Argus Filch nabs us and slaps us in a cage for safekeeping. We're unable to do much of anything until the fog rolls in. He gets gobbled by a banshee, and the doggo nicks his keys to let us out. Lovely. The wailing wraiths look intimidating, but pose no real threat. Kill the shadow dwellers, and then get rubbing your lump of metal in their direction until it disappears. Heading through the ruins of Oakvale and smashing up all the calcium combatants as we go, we're eventually met with this oversized Kiwi Farms regular, and we do barely any damage to him. Along with the flood of Bone Zone blokes running towards us, this is going to be gruelling. So after failing to beat him, we try again, and fail yet again. I don't want to use my last health up for this fight, but what choice do I have? Oh, let's make like brave Sir Salad Dodger and run away. Much easier. Into Bloodstone and to meet up with Reaver, who's frying up a storm in all of his frightening glory. He tells us to be gone. Again, we're not popular enough on YouTube.com to pique his interest. He's unable to refrain from shooting the sculptor who doesn't get his likeness quite right. <laughs> Do you think my buttocks look like that? So, back to Bloodstone to get more subs and members so the Reaper will pay us any mind. Which is actually useful, because we also need to increase our fame to get a bunch of groupies to follow us to a Belial Boltway. So, it will be killing two birds with one stone. Going about choosing what jobs we can take to increase our renown is a little tricky, as we need quests that don't require us to get any loot. Knocking a few off the list straight away. Something is stinking up the Rookridge Inn, and we need to investigate. Turns out to be the great mighty Pooh. After lobbing fireballs and slowly chipping its health away, it'll be conquered. 3,500 fake internet points in the bank. Next up, Tommy has said that there are some squatters in his comfy cave, and can we sort them out? In the cave is a bunch of shark-faced toddlers all over the place, and after running around on cleanup duty, Tommy arrives to inform us that we were actually meant to die. You were meant to get in, but you killed them. Well, a swift slap of a mace and Tommy's also no longer an issue. Next up on the board is a blind date. The farmer we assisted earlier needs some help with his son. Apparently he's having some real issues with the ladies. So, Farmer Giles wants us to help as we're... You're a man of the world. After chatting with Rupert, it appears that he's mildly closeted and doesn't really know what to do. Off to Bowerstone to find him a nice sailor boy. Let's show his picture to the first bloke that wanders by. He seems perfect. Here's a note with my name and address. Tell him to visit me soon. And go off to have a chat with dear old dad. Giles is mildly shocked by the realisation that his son is gay, so they all have a bit of a laugh about it. Flog the farm and head off to the big city to make a new life for themselves. 
I thought I might be famous enough by this point, so I grabbed a gaggle of scum and villainy from Tortuga, I mean Bloodstone, and head to the Corson Cavity. Apparently, this murder of mischief makers isn't a big enough crowd. Fair enough. Are there no more appreciators of the theatre? Oh, how woeful! Let's take on another quest. We might as well bring everyone with us to witness our brilliance. Mrs. Spade needs us to rescue her sons. Sam and Max have gotten themselves into a spot of bother, down by the drowned farm. After hopping down the well and re-deading the undead, Max rabbits on about accidentally releasing a banshee down in Bloodstone. Sam's dogged about it not really being their fault. So, back to Bloodstone with our gang of groupies to fight another rather large banshee. It's down on the docks, same strat applies, kill the shadow monsters and bop it until it ceases to be. Back to Bowerstone and Mrs. Spade is scolding the two, but pays us thanks. Finally, we're recognised enough. Head back to Bloodstone and gather up some additional followers. It seems we lost a couple on our journeys. And when we have all ten, fast travel to the drowned farm and make a beeline for the Ouroboros orifice. After lamenting about how the theatre isn't dead, we get let into Terry Cotter's army. And in the back of the lodgings is a hidden entrance to Terry Cotter's army. And what do we acquire for our trouble? The Perforator. Now this is a big DPS bump. And after increasing all of our skill abilities, we've now grown out of manlet height and are firmly in, oh you're a big un, territory. Now we have a meeting with Reva, who's a terrible pirate that has now heard of us. He sends us to drop off some unimportant trinket to some place in Wraith Marsh. Nothing could possibly go wrong. And it looks like the portrait artist is fried liver and gets got by flintlock firepower. Are you really suggesting my cheek? are anywhere near that low. Speaking of which, just look at how this rifle rips and tears through everything. Where has the perforator been my entire life? After some good old fashioned rooting tooting rifle shooting, we arrive at the Shadow Council. It seems we've been duped, tricked. Malarkey is afoot. Apparently we have to choose for either ourselves or this young lass to lose our good looks and youth. Now, considering I already have a face like a bag of smashed crabs, and I run around the countryside naked with full body 90s era tribal tattoos, yet all the people of Albion flock to me anyway, I think it's safe to say that it's not my boy's charm that aids me in the pulling department. It's probably the fact that I'm... hang on, wait a minute. Built like a brick with biceps the size of Bowerstone, and more popular than its town bicycle rental service. Yeah, I'll be fine. Back to rendezvous with Reva, and he's now going for the double backstab. He's trying to hand us back to Lucian for a price. But the skull duggery goes another layer deeper as Lucian attacks to kill us both. Reva, the city's under attack by a bloody army. Lucian's men, dozens of the buggers. Me? Lucian and I had a gentleman's agreement. How dare he betray me? And just when I was in the middle of trying to betray you. With no choice but to cooperate, we heartily thrust into Reaver's rear passage to fight the double crossers who double cross the double crosser. Reaver is currently at approximately 0.27 ocelots of deception and double crossery. Step it up. With the perforator perforating, the mace swanging, and the fireball and lightning, fireball and lightning and ing all over the place, this group of goth disco attendees pose more of a nuisance than anything else. Just keep on ploughing through Reaver's rear passage until we plop out on Smuggler's Beach, with all of the other heroes to help out with the D4 of demonic tendencies that show up and try to spoil our fun. Hang around with Garth until he opens the Zelda-esque weak point and get perforating. Keep an eye on the men in black who spawn in and get ready to erase their existence if necessary. Focus back on the shard whenever you can and it goes down. Teresa shows up to help convince Reaver to actually help us. Which he does through greed over anything else. This is it. We're all assembled in the circle of heroes. It's time to put a stop to Lucian once and for all. Just before we can finish the ritual, he shows up and he... The last of the heroic blood will flow out onto this hilltop. No! Don't shoot the dog! <laughs> Lucian, you will pay for this! Pitiful creature. Misguided weak. The last time I killed you, it tore my heart out. 
Of course, you were only a child. But then, so was I. Death is not your destiny today, little sparrow. Sister, what is this? You're back. It's the life I wanted. No, no. The more I see, the more I know it's a cruel trick. I can't be convinced to stay in ignorant bliss. I have to get back. The music box. I hear it. I must go. Castle Fairfax looks so nice in the snow. If only we could live there. <laughs> Perhaps that could be the rent. Everyone has their breaking point, and I will find yours. The last time I killed you, it tore my heart out. Of course, you were only a child. But then, so was I. You have passed the test. Your rewards are the opportunity to confront your enemy, and the means to destroy him. Back here in these halls, where the beat of its heart matches my own, there is only one way. Forwards. What? What is that? What are you doing? Stop. Think about what you're doing. Stop now, you fool! You insect! I order you to stop! And now, the man who killed my sister, my dog, and me, twice, speaks. But not for long. Oh, I thought it'd never shut up. There is only one choice. Lucian has fallen, our mission is complete, the world can heal, and we can retreat to our caravan with bacon and live our days out in quiet solace. And with that, Fable 2 is all wrapped up using only Demon Door loot. And now, where does it stack up against everything else we've done? If we kept the original rule set I was going to use, there's no doubt it would be an I'm too young to die. But when we decided to reset after figuring out the death mechanics, and having a second reset at the Crucible, it does feel a chunk more difficult. And as such, sits as the easiest game in Hey, Not Too Rough. And that's it. I want to thank the members who've joined and helped support the channel. Video Pop 100, Casper, picked it mate. And thanks to you. Good night. <laughs>